What's going on guys? My name is James Davis. I am a filmmaker out of North Stonington, Connecticut, and today we're going to be talking about how to take shaky footage like this and we're going to turn it into nice smooth footage like this. Alright, so this is pretty easy to do. We're going to accomplish this with only one effect, but there's a lot of things that we need to adjust to make it look convincing, so let's just hop right into this and get to it. So straight away you're going to notice that I have loaded up two different clips to kind of highlight the two main functions that this effect has. So in order to work with our effects here, what we're going to do is go to our effects workspace. Uh, what we can either get there by pressing effects up here in our upper toolbar, or we can go to window workspaces effects and it'll also take us there. In my effects panel, I'm going to search for warp and it's going to bring up two options here. I have warp stabilizer and wave warp. I'm going to click my warp stabilizer and drag it down onto my first clip here and I'm just gonna kind of let this render out and let you guys see exactly what Premiere is doing here I suspect that without adjusting anything and just letting this stabilize this clip uh, on its own without adjusting anything it's gonna look kind of silly so let's just take a look here okay so I haven't changed anything in the actual warp stabilizer effects panel so I'm just gonna play through this and let you see what it did Ooh. All right, so it looks pretty funny. That does not look good. It looks arguably worse than it did before I applied the effect. Let's go into our control panel here and make this look a little bit better. First thing, I'm going to change the result from smooth motion to no motion. This is just a shot in the back of a cab. So ideally there would be no motion, just looking straight through that windshield there. But it was late at night and I probably shouldn't have been operating the camera at all, so. <laughs> <laughs> so in effort to try to fix that we're gonna click no motion where it says subspace warp here just to kind of briefly explain these basically what subspace warp and perspective do is they kind of warp and manipulate the image in order to try to achieve stabilization when you move to something like position scale rotation or strictly position it's only letting it adjust those parameters in order to stabilize this footage so there's no warping for this clip or for usually anything that is a no motion stabilization clip I like to use position only and basically that's telling Premiere the only thing I want it to do is move this image left right up and down in order to achieve the stabilization the next thing I'm going to adjust is underneath borders here it says stabilize crop and auto scale um, instead of using that what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this drop down menu and I have a bunch of options here but the best one for this clip because it's so dark on all the edges all the edges are already kind of uniform is I can use stabilize and synthesize edges which basically means that I'm letting Premiere make up video footage on the very edge of these clips in order to do the stabilization so let's go ahead and click on that and then if I want to go one step further I can click on advanced and then detailed analysis okay so let's let this stabilize and then we're gonna see what the finished result looks like Okay, so Premiere has rendered through this. Now, when we do the detailed analysis, I should warn you guys, anytime that you click this checkbox, it's going to require more from your computer to render this out. So in order for us to watch this clip back, I'm actually going to have to render this. So I'm just going to hit O at the end of that clip, enter, and let this thing render through. And we will fast forward through this and get ourselves to the end. All right, so with that rendered out now, let's take a look through this clip and see what the results are. Okay, so that looks much better. I think the only things left that I would do on this clip is rotate it and crop in a little bit so this didn't look sideways the whole time. So let's just go ahead and do that so it doesn't bother me. So I'm just going to go to nest so I can bake that warp stabilizer right into there. I'm going to scale in on this maybe 5-8% and then I'm going to rotate it to like right there. Now it looks more straight. I'm gonna render this one more time with this all straightened out and see what the final clip looks like. Okay, so this clip has finally finished rendering. Um, I should mention anytime that you adjust your warp stabilized clip, 
um, whether you trim it down or lengthen it or do anything else to it, it's going to ask to reanalyze. So anytime you change anything within that clip, you're gonna have to re-render this out. So let's just play through this and see what we're left with. Okay, so that's much better. There's still a little bit of bouncing in the frame, but I kind of like it. It looks sort of natural, like the movement of the car. So that's not bad. So let's move on to our second clip now and warp stabilize this clip. So I'm gonna go grab my warp stabilizer, drag it down onto here. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my warp stabilizer and just start adjusting things that are going to need to be changed here. First thing, I'm gonna leave this on smooth motion. This is a moving clip. I'm kind of panning around this Bugatti for this clip. So I do want smooth motion. I don't want no motion or it's gonna do some really strange things. On the smoothness here, I'm gonna turn this down. Uh, generally speaking, I don't ever use anything over like 35 to 40% smoothness or the clip looks strange and clearly messed with. So I'm gonna go to, let's say 25% for this one. I'm gonna leave it on subspace warp and I'm gonna let it render out and just kinda see what it looks like here before I make any final decision. This is with 25% for smoothness. We left it on smooth motion, which is what it'll default to when you drag this effect onto your clip and subspace warp. So let's just preview this and see what it looks like. All right, so that already looks considerably better. There is some more things that we can do to this clip that I'll take you guys through here. Again, we're just gonna go down to our advanced settings here. And the only things that I would probably change here is the detailed analysis. I almost always check this box. It kind of means that Premiere is going to take a little bit more time analyzing your footage and doing a slightly better job at stabilizing it. The next thing here is the crop less smooth more. And just to give you a basic description of what that does, if I move this from 50% and down, it's going to crop less of the edges of my frame here, which is gonna result in less stabilization and less less crop. So I'm not going to have as much stabilization within my clip and it's going to be less cropped in. If I move it over 50%, so from 50% to 100%, it's going to crop in more and it's going to smooth it out more. So I'm giving it more to work with in order to essentially smooth that clip out. I'm gonna leave this at 50% because I kinda like the result that we already have here. This rolling shutter ripple here, the only time you would ever need to use the enhanced reduction is let's say you did like a whip pan or something like that and you're trying to stabilize a clip that has some sort of really fast whipping pan in it where it exposes the rolling shutter of your camera if your camera does have really bad rolling shutter then you would use this enhanced reduction but for this there isn't any really fast motion I think this is at like 60 frames a second so there's no need for that let's preview this one last time and I'll go ahead and click detailed analysis now again, I think I already said this, but I'll warn you guys one more time. When you click the detailed analysis, it's, go it's going to restabilize this footage and it's gonna take a little bit longer. And anytime you render anything that has a, a warp stabilized clip with the detailed analysis in it, it is going to take longer. So just be aware of that. Okay, so this is all rendered out, so let's preview this clip and see what it looks like. Okay, so much smoother. This looks much better. Alright guys, well that is how to apply the warp stabilizer onto clips and to make your footage a little bit smoother than it may have been straight out of camera. Another tip for you, uh, if you guys are using this in a rough in, let's say you just drag and drop a warp stabilizer onto a clip and you're still roughing something in and previewing through all this stuff a bunch and your computer's really bogging down to try to work through all that footage that you've applied all these effects to, something you can do is turn off your global effects so you're not watching the effects and slowing the computer down. And the way that we do that is we can go over here to our preview window you're gonna see this little FX button right here that says Global FX Mute underneath it when I hover over it. Um, if you don't have that in your preview window, just go to this little plus sign to the right here and it'll give you all the different buttons that you can put down here to have access to. So I would just grab that FX button, drag and drop it down here and it'll give me that option. 
And when I click on this, you're going to notice it kind of zooms out a little bit. It gets rid of that crop because I'm not viewing that warp stabilizer anymore. And now my computer doesn't have to work quite as hard to get through this clip. And then if I turn it back on, there it is. Again, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel, guys. Throw me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you have any suggestions for new videos, please drop them below in the comments, and I will see you on the next one.